So I have gone ahead and tidied up my computer setup now. Uh, last time when I first booted this computer up for the first time in five years, I simply plugged all the cables in and powered the computer on and it was up and running, but uh, it was not very ideal for using it. So I've now tidied it up now. I have the mouse and keyboard here with lots of space on the desk, and I have pushed the monitor up there, and then I have moved the computer down here to the floor like a tower probably would have been at the time. And I've plugged all the cables in the back here. And I have everything plugged in except for the phone jack, actually. I forgot about that. And that is just on the floor here. And I can plug that in down here. I believe it would plug in right there. There we go. Hopefully that is the line jack and not the phone jack. And we can get this up and going again. And so the monitor is on, and then, well, this isn't turning on now because I powered the computer completely off last time by using the power switch in the back. So I will have to turn the power switch on, and as soon as I do that, the computer will turn on. We're booting up Windows 98 now. This is now the second time in five years that this computer is booting up. Uh-oh. One or more network transport drivers fail to load. Possibly that could be for the phone jack, I'm not sure, for the phone line, since I just plugged a phone line into the computer. And oh, one more thing I forgot to mention. I was wondering why I didn't hear any sound. So I actually plugged in the aux into my stereo on here, and then I've disconnected these speakers again, and I've plugged those back into the stereo there. So if I turn the stereo on and switch it to the aux function and increase the volume, so now sound should be on. That's volume, there we go. Oh, there we go. Very loud, okay. I'll turn the uh, 
volume on this down a little bit. There we go. So now I'll just restart the computer. That's interesting. Rotor bond DSS background agent. I have no idea what this is, so I'll just end the task. Perhaps I'm just bad at remembering, but it does seem like it's taking quite a bit longer for it to restart today than it did to shut down yesterday.
Well, this is taking abnormally long. I think at this point, I may just do a hard shutdown and just cut power to the computer. What I'll actually do is I will toggle the power switch in the back here. And hopefully we'll boot up again now that I've turned it off improperly. The sound is on this time, so you should hear the startup sounds nice and loud. Oh, I remember the screen. I remember the screen very well. I saw this a lot back when I was using this computer regularly. Um, And, I don't know, I kind of like this screen sometimes. You know, obviously I didn't know what this was then. But, you know, I, I thought it was a good thing to see this, you know. And I would just actually cycle the computer off just so I could see this when it would turn on again. Um, personally, though, this does seem to me to be slightly more helpful than some computer error messages today when computers are not turned off properly. I think this type of check is still done, but not quite in the same manner. You certainly don't see a screen that looks like this. And I could exit the scan disk thing, but I'll just let this run, because why not? Now it looks like it's going. This does take a little bit longer than I thought it would. So I'm not sure if it's actually scanning the entire hard drive. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, this computer has a 7 gigabyte hard drive. And I believe it has 512 megabytes of RAM. So I'll try to look at some of the system specs when we get logged on. But I believe that those are the hard drive capacity and RAM on this computer.
we're more than two thirds done now. Shouldn't be long now. Hmm. But can you imagine waiting this long for such a check today? I mean, consumers would certainly not be happy about this. Less than 15% left now. We're finally coming to the end here now. and they'll press escape to log on.
around. I'll open up my computer here. Map network drive. Actually, we can go to properties here. And here are all the, here are all the specs. Wow, actually I was wrong. I thought it was 512 megs of RAM. 96 megabytes of RAM. Wow, 96 megabytes of RAM. I mean, you never know it. Um, once this computer is powered up, it's, it's pretty fast. It's faster than a computer running Windows 7 with only one gigabyte, with one gigabyte of RAM, which is, you know, more than 10 times the amount on this computer. So, device manager, pretty, pretty standard. Dial-up adapter, so that would be the phone line, basically. Performance, 96 megabytes of RAM, 78% free in terms of system resources, so not being used very much right now, and I don't have any programs open, so that would make sense. But yeah, this is Microsoft Windows 98, second edition, and 96 megabytes of RAM. And if we actually open up my computer now, and I don't have anything in the floppy drive. But if we go to properties for the C drive, it shows the hard drive specs. So yeah, I was about right on this one. 7.46 gigabyte hard drive. Currently about four and a half gigs are used. A little under three gigs are free. So, so this also would include the Windows installation. So the entire Windows 98 operating system, plus you know all the files that are on here, all the programs are all under five gigabytes. That's that's pretty good. You couldn't really get that with modern versions of Windows. So error checking, I'm pretty sure that that's what just happened. So no way am I clicking that again. Web sharing. Yeah, so that's that. Pretty basic stuff here. Going up dial up networking. Could try making a new connection now that I've plugged a phone line in. Who knows whether this would actually work, but it looks like that is the onboard modem, 56 kilobyte modem. And speaker volume is high, max speed, connection, data bits, eight. So this is an 8N1 connection. No parity bits, one stop bit, eight data bits. Wait for dial tone before dialing. I think that's a pretty good idea. Um, now all your standard dial up options are basically here. Bring up terminal window before dialing. Operator assisted or manual dial. Wait for credit card tone. Display modem status. You know, this is interesting. Um, I'll leave those unchecked for now, but I could see how those would be helpful. Area code, I'll leave that blank. Now there's actually a BBS. Um, currently this computer's phone line is connected to NPSTN and there's a BBS on 327-1212. And I will leave the area code blank. Let's see what's in here. Well, possibly this has been used before. 800 and 888 are toll free area codes. 414 is the area code for Milwaukee. And we are in a suburb of Milwaukee here. Now, we are currently in the 262 area code. 262 was a split from 414. And that was a split that happened in the late 90s. But, um,. I mean, I could see that why that would be there. So actually, possibly this computer has been used for dial-up before. Offhand, I'm, I don't recognize area code 425, but um, 
this there's no area code for NPSTN, so I'll just set that and hmm, I guess you can't name the connection. That's weird. Oh, you have to name it here. I'll just call it BBS maybe. Yeah, I wonder what would happen if I clicked on it. Now it says 1327.212. Not sure why. What's up with the one? Because I don't want it to dial a one. Maybe that just means United States. Let's see what it would actually dial. Now I have this computer connected to a phone line. I believe the speaker, the speaker phone is on the same phone line. So we can monitor the line using this phone. Uh oh. Hold on. We'll try that again. Dial-up not working. Was unable to connect. Complete the connection. Connect the modem to your computer and try again. So not even worth trying that. That is our area code. Wow, lots of options here. I can do pulse dialing if I wanted to. Access and outlet. It's like fine. And you can enter multiple digits here. That's a nice feature. For example, I bet you could put, you know, an access code or calling code information in there. So lots of lots of options in here. But something with the modem is not connected right, so none of this will work until that has been fixed. We have hyper terminal on here too. Programs, accessories, communications. There, so there is dial up networking. Phone dialer, interesting. Oh, basically, it's like it's, a, it's just a phone dialer. Um, wonder if this works. Another program is using, well, I close the other program. Let me see. Hmm. Well, I can't bring up Task Manager by right-clicking the task bar. I wonder how I would do that. Welcome to Windows. Oh.
username or password. This is not what I want to do either. We can close that now. Yeah, another program is using the selected telephony service. But I'm not sure what else is using the selected telephony service. That's rather bizarre. Tic-tac-toe is not an internet program, so I'm not sure why that's in this internet tools folder. Hmm. Maybe it's possible that Windows 98 does not come with a task manager. Here are some more system stats. So this computer has Internet Explorer 5.6. Or is it six? Well, this has six version six. Well, might as well open it and find out. Um, not sure if Internet Explorer would be here. Where? Well, I could just. It was the last thing I ran apparently five years ago, so I could just open up Run and click OK. I want this Intel thing. No, thank you. Don't want to register. So obviously there's no internet connection, there's no network connection. So um, I guess Google.com is set at the home as the home page. But if we go here, and surprisingly, this is basically what Internet Explorer looks like still today. I mean, obviously it looks a little bit more modern, but I mean these are the pretty much the exact same tabs in Internet Explorer version 11. And this is what? Internet Explorer, Internet Explorer 6. That was released with Windows XP. So this, yeah, that's a Windows XP logo there. So this is an updated version of Windows Internet Explorer that was not originally released with Windows 98. So this version of Internet Explorer has been updated. Probably it's from 2001. So right now this browser is 17 years old. Maybe there is something in the help of task manager. Troubleshooting. Well, I do want to troubleshoot the modem. System tools, system monitor. Wonder if I could. What's well, even Windows 98? Innovative, easy to use. USB, what do you know? And today, USB is everywhere. For new to Windows 98, tips for Windows 3.1 users, that will probably not help me. Now, 
stuff. So there's lots of useful help in here. Now, I guess here's probably the easiest way. If I just type in task manager, that's how you would do it in a newer version of Windows. I'll just add the .exe just to see. Cannot find the file. So I guess there is no task manager in Windows 98. So I'll just go ahead and open Hyper Terminal, see maybe if I can make a connection there. Hyper Terminal. Well, there's the program, Hyper Terminal. Enter a new connection and choose an icon. Huh, they have a little MCI icon. So there is AT&T MCI, that's a GE logo. It's interesting that they have that company specifically. Um, I don't know what icon I wanna choose. Maybe I will just go with this mail icon. I will call it BBS because there is a BBS available for me to connect and that is the onboard modem so your location dialing properties Yeah. None direct dial. Modify. Redial. Well, I want to fix that. Don't use the country code and area code. Dial now. Um. We can try that, I guess. Please insert your modem now. Click cancel to quit dialing. And I thought there was an onboard modem. So perhaps I was wrong about that. Um, yeah, and here's the actual terminal window. And if I could just get that working. It says the device is working properly. Dial up adapter. I still find it hard to believe that this computer only has 96 megabytes of RAM. Wow. Um, let's see. So this looks like Windows Explorer here. Oops, now I closed that. But uh, let me see if Windows E works. That does open Explorer, nice. So, I what printers were on here at one point. Now there were a few connected. Control panel, that would be helpful, actually. Add new hardware. Yeah, I didn't add any hardware. Personalize your computer. I want to change the theme now. Modems. And that to me looks like the onboard modem. 
Com2 is the port. Com2. Yeah, that looks about right. No modem on COM1. We have a modem is on COM2, communications driver. Uh, couldn't open port. Identifier. COM2, highest speed, no response. I bet if I tried it on that one. Couldn't open port. Interesting. Interesting. Well, telephony. You know, that's just basic stuff. Users, I don't know if we'll have access to that. Hey, I actually do have an account on here. Interesting. I wonder... I'm logging in as a guest right now, so if I can set the password... Wow, I can change a password, even though, like, I literally logged in with a guest account. Um, oh, wait. You have to know the old password first. Which I don't know, so, um... Well... Can I make a new user? I can make a new user. Actually, um, I'll make this later maybe, I don't know. Well, yeah. Guest account is not listed here. That's interesting. It's interesting to note you can actually create an account without even logging on to the computer. Obviously it was a different world back when Windows 98 was prominent. So today that would be a huge security no-no. files in here. WinZip. Hang on, but can't make a connection here. Please insert your modem now. Interesting. Wonder if this is set for COM2. Send file using, okay, that's not what I want to do. What are these properties? Connect using, maybe, I, it did say it was on COM2, so who knows, maybe that'll work. I mean, I highly doubt it, but yeah, unable to open COM2. How did I do this again? Properties. Uh, direct com one, maybe? And nothing. I know that won't work. Because there's no network interface card in this computer. If I change it back to that, I can figure it. Yeah, it says com two. Using COM2. Maybe I'll check these just so you know what's going on. And 
try making a call. Um, no, I don't want to make a new connection. I will open an existing connection, which I did not save this connection, did I? No, I did not. But new call. No area code. Telnet terminal, ANSI emulation, VT100 is what I've been told to use for that. Beep three times when connecting or disconnecting. Well, why not? The more sound I hear at this point, the better probably. Please insert your modem now. Interesting. I don't know why that would be happening, but I will save the connection just so I have it. And then if I open it, yeah, now I see bbs.ht. So. So there's Mozilla Firefox on here. Obviously, this isn't working now, so I'll look into that some other time. But I wonder what version of Firefox is on here because that looks like a modern Firefox icon. I didn't even know Firefox was around way back then, so. Okay, so obviously this is not what Firefox looks like today. But. Wow, this is actually from... 2007. This version of Firefox is only 11 years old. That's actually pretty new, considering Windows 98 at the time was already almost a decade old. So this is a pretty modern web browser for Windows 98, a really modern web browser. I mean, you have a 2007 web browser running on a computer with 98 megabytes of RAM. That's pretty cool. Here's Excel 2000. And it's basically just your standard Excel without the ribbon, pre-ribbon. There is that nice dog again. I really like that dog. If I close the program, the little doggy will go away. It's really cute. So, well, that's it for this session. Um, I'll try to do some troubleshooting with that modem stuff that wasn't working. That was interesting because it looks like there is an onboard modem. I'm not sure why it, the computer thinks there's not a modem. But uh, hopefully I'll have another video coming soon with more, more on this computer.